What's up, Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at this Taxar watch that was codenamed Project Blackfish. Now, Taxar stands for Tactical Search and Rescue, but you know me, I would have liked to have had a tactical seek and destroy type of watch. I'm just kidding. So to tell you a bit more, this is a watch that was designed and built as a collaboration effort between Pierre with the PD Watch Project and Eric with the Rico's Watches podcast channel. And these watches will be produced in small batches in a limited run of 50 pieces. So I'm going to link the website down in the description where you can order yours if you're interested. Now this video is essentially a first time look at this watch in full. So I'm really thankful that Pierre and Eric were willing to send this into my channel so I could give you a full review on it today. Now one of the first things I wanted to mention about the watch before we get into the review is that 20% of the profits made will be going to benefit the Veterans Watchmaker Initiative which helps benefit disabled United States veterans by providing training and support to become skilled watchmakers so that they can have a career in the watch repair industry. And I'll include a link for the Veterans Watchmaker Initiative in the description so you can find out more information. And if you should decide to donate, especially for such a worthy cause, you can simply do that directly on their site as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip the camera around and take a full in-depth look at this watch here. All right, and here we have it guys, the Taxar watch, which you're gonna get into now, but in case if you are new to the channel, my name's Dave, may the Schwartz be with you, and hey, did you know, it's a great day to wear a watch, boom. Today I have on the Agelosser Themis watch, this is an automatic regulator on this blue leather strap, and I have done a full review on this watch, so if you haven't seen it yet, check it out up here, I highly recommend it, but this thing is just an absolute stunner, and I'm gonna try and get some more watches by Agelosser in the future, because. I just think they have tremendous value. All right, let's start with dimensions as we always do. And being that this watch is built on the Seiko Turtle platform, it has a case diameter of 45 millimeters. If we include the crown at the four o'clock position, that actually comes out just to around 46 millimeters. The lug to lug height from tip to tip is measuring in at 47 millimeters. And the case thickness with the double domed sapphire crystal is just around 15 millimeters. The lug width on this watch is 22 millimeters, so you will have lots of options for strap swaps, but you won't want to change out this strap, which we'll get back to here in just a moment. Each of these pieces will be hand assembled by Pierre, so the first batch will be done with 25 pieces and will have an estimate build time out of about eight to nine weeks, but first orders may ship out sooner. Looking at the watch, one of the first things that you'll notice are the colors being used. While the case of this watch is full 316L solid stainless steel, it has been completely Cerakoted in a tungsten gray color, which I just love the look of. Now, Cerakoting is commonly done to firearms, so this definitely ties in with the tactical vibe that Eric and Pierre were going for. And the orange color that you see here being used is called Tequila Sunrise Orange, and that of course helps tie in with the search and rescue aspect of the design. The Cerakoting is done really well on not just the case, but throughout on the case back and on the crown also. And they even did a custom orange Cerakoting to the tang buckle of this Artem strap. Now I've done a review on Artem straps, so I can tell you from experience that this was an excellent choice to include on this particular build. It's comfortable, it's robust, and still luxurious. If you're not familiar with Artem straps, it is a sailcloth strap with a special material on the underside allowing for waterproofing while still remaining comfortable. When I had this watch on at the shooting range, it felt great the entire time. There was no problem with handling full range of motion and any sweating that was encountered. I also like how they Cerakoted the crown, which is signed with the PD Watch Project gear logo and the crown is also a triple gasket screw down crown. This helps achieve the watch's 200 meter water resistance rating. Now the crown screws onto the threading effortlessly and it feels extra grippy on the coin edge due to that Cerakoting. Next, the watch has been given a 120 click unidirectional bezel that also has been Cerakoted, giving some of that extra grippy feel on the coin edge, same as mentioned on the crown. It's easy to actuate and there is zero back play does have a ceramic insert that is fully loomed, which we'll get back to shortly, and you'll see that the insert is in this high gloss black color. Full disclosure, the final production models will not have any alignment issues, but this prototype is off alignment just slightly, so I'm going to be sending it back to Pierre so he can correct that before it gets into the hands of the next reviewer, but I just wanted to point that out to avoid any criticisms in the comments. 
Now I do like the way that this double dome sapphire crystal meets flush with the edge of the bezel, giving minimal distortion when looking at the watch at an angle. It does also have a clear AR coating applied to the inside or underside of the crystal. The dial is made out of forged carbon fiber, so you'll get a unique look on each watch that is made. No two will be alike. And I really like the abstract look it creates. It also stays true to the tactical nature of the watch. And there are round hour markers applied as well as the single block markers at six and nine with a double angled block marker at 12. Each of these markers are loomed and are lined with stainless steel along the edges. There's also a stainless steel framed date window at three o'clock and you'll see there is a black date wheel which is a nice touch and shows the attention that went into this design. The watch is a three hand movement with a glossy orange painted minute hand, glossy black painted hour and second hand, and these minute and hour hands are section baton shapes while the second hand is a needle shape with a loomed rectangular lollipop. In different lighting, the black second hand may be a bit difficult to see, but also keep in mind that with different patterns on the carbon fiber dial, this may not be an issue for others. The orange ray hot is sloped and you'll notice there's an absence of any minute indices or chapter ring. This does allow for a more minimal dial design and it's subjective to each person's taste, but I do think it was smart to have the minute indices etched throughout the bezel. Lastly, looking at the dial, we see PD Watch Project branding at 12 o'clock and Taxar printed in red at six o'clock, along with indications of 200 meters water resistance. Okay, so let's turn out the lights and get a loom shot, which I think you'll really enjoy. And as you can see, this thing lights up with an impressive glow to every single indice and marker that is needed. I was especially impressed with the loom date number also on the date wheel. And that's one of the coolest features for this watch in my opinion. I also like that the handset glows in green while the rest of the loom applied is in blue. The loom is strong initially before fading out a bit, but will last many hours with visibility throughout the night. Moving to the case back, you'll see the customized design on the back with the Ricoh's Watches podcast branding and logo. If you choose to select your limited edition number for the watch when ordered, you'll see it listed on the left side of the coffee steam and the number 50 on the right side to indicate it's number X out of 50 watches made. The automatic movement power in this watch is the Seiko NH35, which has been regulated and adjusted. Now, those familiar with the NH35 know it is a workhorse, tried and true movement that beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, has a 40 hour power reserve, and also allows for hand winding and hacking. Let's take a look at the performance of this particular movement. Now the Seiko NH35 movement, I want to say within spec is like minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. Obviously, as you can see, this particular movement is fluctuating. It was between minus six, it's gone to minus 12. So it's kind of hovering in between that range, which is fine. And we do see a little bit of a beat error here, but this is the particular accuracy we're getting on this movement here. Okay, so let's summarize and talk price. This was my first time experiencing a Seiko Turtle type of watch, and I gotta say, I love the look of it, and it wears much smaller than you would think, especially when hearing those case measurements. I also like that there are drilled lugs, which I forgot to mention, and while the lugs don't curve downward in an aggressive way, I like the overall case shape and the design. It actually wears really well on my seven inch wrist, as you see here, and I'm a fan of tactical stuff in general, so this watch design is right up my alley. Now, I think what really sets it apart from the usual black PVD coated watches that we see often is their use of the Sarah coating and the orange accents give it a nice contrast and a fun pop of color to it. The loom is phenomenal and all of the materials being used are top notch. Currently, this watch is available for pre-order with a price of $575. These are being assembled by hand to ensure that the quality and the fitment is meeting the highest of standards. Also keep in mind, 20% of the profits will again go to the Veterans Watchmaker Initiative. It's also coming on an Artem strap. Now these are limited, so if you are thinking about picking one up, don't miss out. I don't get any commissions or portions of the sales, and this is not a paid review, but I want to hear your feedback and thoughts about this watch. I know Pierre and Eric plan to do future collaborations to benefit other charities, so if there's any feedback you have for them specifically to consider on future watch builds, please be sure to drop a comment down below. It really is appreciated. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider joining the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. You can of course subscribe by tapping my logo over here. And if you want some more cool videos to watch, check out these, which I know you'll love. All right, thanks for checking out this review. And until next time, as always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.